Welcome to Kiss the Reviews. I'm Armando. That's Corey. And today we're doing 1986s. Nine and a half weeks. So before we get started, if you want to follow me or Corey on Twitter, you could follow me at Junior D's. You could follow Corey at Corey underscore Idol. Or you could follow the show at Kiss the Reviews on both Twitter and Instagram. Stop on by and say hi to Christina. Yes. She's. She's lovely, and she takes care of all of our social media stuff. She's the reason we actually have a presence online <laughs> at all. Exactly. Other than that, it would just be like, I'd still probably have like a little silhouette guy in my Twitter. Oh, yeah, account. yeah. <laughs> Tom is still my only friend. <laughs> Tom. Oh, let's get into, into nine and a half weeks, and I'll, I'll get into my what I thought going into this, because I have seen the movie a few times, but it's been a long time. But let's get into the cast of Nine and a Half Weeks. This stars Mickey Rourke as John, Kim Basinger as Elizabeth, and Margaret Witten as Molly. It's, it's been a long time since I've seen this movie. Mm -hmm. I thought of this movie going in before I watched it this time around as just like, hey, this is a better version of Sliver. Um, because it was all in that that same like genre at mm -hmm. the time. It was like 86 to, you know, 85-ish till about 97, 98, roughly mm -hmm. that time span is where a lot of these types of films came out. Yes. Um, it had more of like the art house feel kind of mm -hmm. deal to it. Um but I literally thought this was just banging for like an hour and a half, which I was wrong immediately because it's two hours um, and not a lot of banging in this movie. Just a lot of really fucked up scenarios and situations. Yeah, I um, I'm going to be honest with you for for what was supposed to be a fuck film. I got really bored. Yeah, I was soft most of the time. Hoo -ah! I genuinely found this story boring. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. No part of her sexual discovery or rebirth after a divorce. It just struck me as anything interesting. Mickey Rourke wasn't very interesting to me. No. In this, he just kind of seemed like a little bit of a pervert. Yeah. And I'm not kink shaming. I'll fucking I'll throw fruit in your fucking mouth from a fucking half course shot. I'm deadly with that shit. But at the same time, now let's two things about about Mickey Rourke in this movie. One, God, he used to be a handsome man, and now he looks like an older like alien. He doesn't. It's not even like the same human anymore. Um, so that's one. And two, I'm gonna go ahead and just do it. Don't do that real quick before we even get into the fucking movie. Don't do that, it's not good for ya. Hi, Johns of the world. We all have this friend. We all have a John in our lives, okay? Kind of funny, a little fucked up, and you're like, hey, I'm into dark humor, you're fucked up, and so am I. Mm -hmm. But he's, j like, you can't place it, but he's just kind of a douche. Just yeah. don't be a John, because everything throughout this movie they're fucking around they're doing their little kink stuff and blah 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 and he was like yeah you like cake yeah i'm gonna shove a fucking pickle in your mouth like he 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 it's like sweet 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 grapes strawberries blah 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 here's a lemon with the whole skin it, it's just that one thing he's just kind of a dick and you're like dude Fucking pump the brakes, pal. So much of a dick that she has to fucking chug milk like a psychopath <laughs> to get the taste of a hot pepper out of her mouth in the middle of foreplay. You were right. So let's get into this movie, okay? So this movie opens in New York City as Elizabeth walks to work at an art gallery. She's discussing a dinner party that they're setting up uh, with the people that she works with. And we then see Elizabeth at some sort of like street fair soon thereafter, having a good old time as John notices her walking through the streets. 
he walks up and begins talking to her. There's this sexual attraction between them, but they don't know each other. They had seen each other one time when they were getting the uh, food at the Chinese yes. restaurant for the uh, gallery opening or whatever the fuck is going on. Yeah. But yeah, um, they start having this weird conversation and this kind of back and forth tit for tat kind of thing that I guess is supposed to be like sexy and all this, but really, I don't know, man. Like it's just, it's, it's, it's just weird. You know, you know how what we're gonna do here. This is, I think, will save us a lot of time. Corey's life lessons. Hi, boys and girls. Uncle Corey here. If uh, you are talking to a potential sexual partner and they reveal nothing about themselves and answer every question with a question, cut bait and run, dude. They're gonna Absolutely. be a problem. And it might be some good sex. But you're going to come with a lot of baggage. Well, a couple of things. Because this whole conversation ends up in them going to have lunch at an Italian joint, right? And he's schooling her here on his knowledge of mafia members who were killed in this restaurant. He then takes her back to a quote-unquote friend's boathouse where he immediately starts putting new bed sheets on the bed. And he's like, he starts talking in the way Dennis Reynolds talks about the implication in Always Sunny. It's not any riskier than you coming here. There's no one to hear you if you call down. <laughs> because if the girl said no, then the answer obviously is no. No. But the thing right. is, is she's not going to say yeah. no. She would never say no because of the implication. This whole movie was the archetype for the Dennis system. Because that's literally what he runs. I was keeping yeah. track of it. He's totally running the dentist system on her right up until the gangbang. You were right. And this is what is so weird about it because he starts making the bed sheets, you, like making the bed up, and she's kind of doing what she's supposed to do, supposed to do, and being like, oh, you're awful presumptuous, aren't you? And he's like, am I? Which again, answering questions with questions. Fuck that. You're not putting anything inside of me if you answer multiple questions with questions. That's just, the, that's a steadfast rule. We have a great um, section of do it yourself. Do you like to do it yourself? She's still kind of like attracted to how forward he's being and how presumptuous he is with what's going to yeah. happen next. And even up to where he's like, you know, am I being presumptuous? Like you came here. You don't know me. There's nobody else here. Like, you don't know this place. You don't know me. Like, you came here. I think we both know what you were into. But that's where that should stop. Yes. He goes hard in the paint <laughs> with basically insinuating, I can do whatever the fuck I want to you for as long as I want to you, and you'll never get any help whatsoever. I mean, there's no taxi cab waiting on the curb. There's no phone booth outside. That's when she's like, oh, okay, I'm done. <laughs> Bye. I'm done. Thanks. Yes. And so, she's totally right. Like, dude, what are you doing, John? It's, yeah. That's crazy she's, shit. She gets completely freaked out here, as she should. And she immediately bolts. He then sends her flowers at work, and everything's good to go. They hang out, they go to some shitty fair where he leaves her at the top of the ferris wheel and this is what i'm talking about people D it's this shit oh ha 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 you got on blah 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 i stop it for a second and then they go and take five they just walk away and leave you at the top of the fucking thing like listen yeah sexual awakening aside and as far as like this divorcee and you know i'm just looking to get back out in the field and meet somebody and, I don't know, maybe have a few sexual escapades along the way. I'm cool with that. But for, like, this whole sexual awakening of Elizabeth in this movie, it's, like you said, it's a very boring sexual awakening. And it's just, a, it's creepy all the way around because a normal person in this situation, on the Ferris wheel, you stop it, haha, everybody has a laugh, 
and then you make the Ferris wheel go around, we hang out, we have a good rest of the day together. No, this motherfucker just bounces for an undisclosed amount of time, and then it just cuts to them afterwards, and she's just like, <laughs> silly. What? <laughs> Here, here's my problem with the scene. It doesn't rely on his douchiness, which it does exist, or her being freaked out and not stop screaming like a fucking child. It's with the operator of the Ferris wheel. Bro, that's your, you're going to get fired. And you got a job as a Ferris wheel operator. Where do you think you go from there? There's not a big upswing. Like you're down, it's not a big fall for you. Let's just say yeah. that. Yeah. You're going from like Ferris wheel oper operator to like, I'm the guy that cleans the dog shit out of like those tins and parks that collect all Listen. the dog shit. Let's let's face reality. You're going from I work the Ferris wheel at the fair to prison. That's your next step. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. And you probably will for gross negligence when that rusty bucket of a fucking thing falls and she dies. She then takes him back to her apartment. And after their weird day together, we find out that she was married for for three years, is now divorced. John asks her to take off her dress and says he's going to blindfold her, and then begins to tease her with ice cubes and some light touching, fade to black, and then cut to Elizabeth selling a painting. This is where I started realizing really what this movie was and the brilliance in this movie. Because this was what uh, 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 Fifty Shades of Grey and that bullshit was trying to do this in the same way this movie is all foreplay yes there are two consensual sex scenes in this movie so for like a fuck film it's not really that it's a foreplay film yeah. and the foreplay is dope like it's cool but at the same time it's just like are, are we fucking at any point yeah you know what i mean like i'm all about warming the engine up but at some point, like, I got to get up tomorrow. I got to get Like, I just can't. I'm, eventually, I'm going to run out of ice. We then cut to Elizabeth and John at John's apartment. After three seconds of small talk, he gives her a present, a gold watch. He then asks her if she knows that they used to hypnotize people with the sound of ticking, then tells her that each day at noon, she needs to think about him touching her. Dude, okay, I, I mean, I guess I got a quick don't do that. Don't do that, it's not good for you. Hi fucking everybody. <laughs> we all like gifts. We all like to receive gifts and give gifts and whatever. But if somebody gives you a watch, which everybody's got a cell phone nowadays, if you're into watches, it's just because you like jewelry. And I'm okay with that. Somebody gives you a watch and says, hey, you know, they used to hypnotize people. The minute hypnotize comes out of the mouth, you're done. You're done. Because now Elizabeth is at work. She can't concentrate. She's fucking cut to her looking at art slides on a projector. And she's, you know, finger banging herself and the watch and the whole. It just it becomes a thing. And she's cool with it like he already hypnotized her Corey's life lessons hi employees uncle Corey here don't fuck off at your ferris wheel job and don't masturbate at work can we just draw a fucking line in the sand that's fucking great you're at work yes no I don't We've talked about on this show, like, don't hit on somebody while they're working because they're at work. Don't jerk yourself off or flick your bean or whatever the <laughs> fuck we have to say to get it across to you that that's not okay. And you will, in fact, be fired. We now cut back to John and Elizabeth hanging out, going back to her place. And while cooking, Elizabeth walks into the kitchen. John asks her to close her eyes and sit on the floor. And we get the little playful scene of him feeding her, ending in him smothering her in honey and 
this dude this and again no kink shame this like this this whole review and commentary isn't about kink shaming and this is stupid and why do this but i don't know call me the child of immigrants but when i watch this scene i'm like that's a waste of food like what what are we what are we doing here like do you know how much strawberries cost at the fucking market be careful you're starting to sound like a poor Uh. i'm not a poor i'm a cheap that's what i am you're right again i also fell into the same kind of thing not a waste of food necessarily your choices of food are very impractical it started off absolutely started off fine yeah totally fine but you dip into hot peppers she's fucking hot guzzling milk like it's going out of style which is fucking have you ever tried to make out with somebody after they drink milk i don't care how sexy your food play is yeah, 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 that ain't happening. That's Not for disgusting. me. Disgusting. Disgusting. And then you go into the honey, and you're smearing. I don't know about you, but I have something called fucking body hair. And you <laughs> rubbing honey all over me, That's... and then yourself, and then thinking you're going to enter me with honey? Fuck you. What are That's you, ba- insane? That's basically like you're just waxing yourself with honey at that point. <laughs> yeah, you can eat a dick, Winnie the Pooh, because that ain't <laughs> happening. No bother. No bother. Her and Molly are roommates. I've had roommates <laughs> in the past. And if I'm Molly and I wake up and there's just jalapeno juice and fucking honey all over the fucking floor, I'm like, listen, I ain't your fucking maid. Clean this shit up. Look at M- Molly's actions. <laughs> it, it throughout this movie well dictate that she doesn't have a say ever again in any way i leave no. this apartment no. or anything i do with my she, life she has forfeited all her rights <laughs> yeah aunt vera was hot right up until she was getting fucked by somebody's ex-husband so and at work that next day molly tells elizabeth that she went out with her ex-husband bruce slept with him and again up until this point molly Cool. At this point, it's like, oh, you forfeited all your rights as a friend, as a roommate, as whatever. Like, I should legally be able to just toss you out of our apartment window to your death. Like, that's that's where we're at with with that friendship. Yeah, and, and her excuse is, I she just keeps going. I couldn't say no. Why did he duct tape your mouth? Well, you if just he's like said John. <laughs> you said it to me three times. No, I couldn't say no. I couldn't say no. Hey, I couldn't say no. What do you want me to do? You just fucking said it. Through. You demonstrated you actually can say that fucking word, you piece of yeah. shit. You just chose not to. And it seems like now you've never said no. All this shit you've been talking through the whole movie, I kind of thought it was a little, you know, hyperbole. Like, yeah. oh, I'm over sex. Ha, 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 ha. Because I'm a sexually independent female. I get it. That's the 80s. That's how you're going to be viewed. So you're just... Jumping into it. Yeah, yeah. And put, no, you know how I know that that's all true and who you are? Because you just fucked your best friend's ex-husband. You were right. Elizabeth then invites John to a party that she's going to with Molly. John refuses and I don't want to meet anybody and yada, yada. He gives her all the excuses in the fucking book. And again, here's a don't do that. Don't do that. It's not good for you. Hi, everybody. If, if you're dating somebody, going back to Corey's uh, PSA about answering questions with questions and all that, if you start, I don't know, actually liking somebody and you're like, OK, this is becoming a thing. This isn't just like like a fuck friend. This is like we're we're starting to enter like relationship territory. I'm staying at his place. He's staying at mine. And then you invite him out like, hey, I want you to meet some of my friends. We're going to a party. And he's like. Nah, I don't want to meet, meet anybody new. I already know a lot of people. Ugh, it's a whole thing. I don't like it. Cut, bait, and run. Don't do what she does and go, I mean, he's just quirky and weird. And But no, he's probably married. We'll start there. Even though John here isn't. But who knows? They, they never disclosed, really. But... Yeah he's probably married or she's probably married or at least dating somebody else. And you're the side piece. That's what that is. Yeah. uh, And and a hot tip to John, 
none of us want to meet any of their friends, <laughs> but we do it because we have to. That's part of the agreement. Yeah. And you're not special, you smug fuck. That's it. At first, I was like, well, good for you. Like, you know, you set this base honesty. So now it's not that shocking when you're just like literally banging yeah. your head on the table over the thought of meeting your friends, which is what we all metaphorically do when that inevitably comes up. Yep. Right? Nobody wants to do that. But yeah. we do it because it's part of the social fucking contract. Is it possible this story is true? Yes, it is. Here, here's where my alarm bells ring. Like, you don't want to meet my friends. Fine. You've been brutally honest. We've had all this crazy sex. You know, I get it. Like, maybe you are really trying to keep your distance still. Whatever the reason. Fine. But you say you want to pick out my clothes for me. You want to bathe me. You want to feed me. And you want me all to yourself at night. Yeah. We're getting into a territory here that I'm very uncomfortable with. I don't like this anymore. I want to go home. She's just sitting there like an inanimate object in some of the next couple scenes getting her hair brushed. And she's like, did yeah. you treat all the others this well? And even that question he can't answer. It's like, dude, whatever grooming you were doing, both literally <laughs> and figuratively, it's set in. So just tell her the truth. Be like, yes, you can start answering questions now. It's fine. Yeah. But even that, he's just like, oh, silly, silly girl. Let me comb your hair. <laughs> silly goose. John gets a call and has to go meet with a friend, but tells her to stay at his place here. And while he's gone, Elizabeth starts snooping around his apartment, as she should, by the way. <laughs> the phone rings, and when she answers, it's John. He asks her if she's been snooping around, and he asks her, have you been a nosy Parker? Tell me if you've been a nosy Parker. Let's just say you've written all this other stuff off as John's just a quirky guy. Fine. That's where your head's at. You're into what he's doing and brushing your hair and bathing you and, you know, put his finger in your butt. Whatever, whatever <laughs> you're into, cool. But the minute somebody is on the phone and not in a joking way, in a very serious way, says, you have you been a nosy Parker? Um, you're a fucking weirdo. Forget all the weird like sex stuff and food and brushing and put all that away. Did you just use the term nosy Parker? Because I gotta go. Yeah, you're you're getting you're getting your sexual awakening provided to you by a serial killer. A hundred percent. Everything about him, his apartment. The way he talks to her and the nose of Parker and he's withholding. Dude, you don't have intimacy issues. You're a fucking serial killer. And when he gets home, he tells her that she's been a bad girl and he's going to spank her. She gets pissed. She takes a swing at him. They wrestle around a bit and then have questionable consensual sex on the table. It, it's just the whole scene was just fucking weird yeah i've again i don't want to say like oh it's a rape because i don't fucking know i don't know what happened yeah. here this is very weird and i was in i was literally in the room and i don't yes. know what happened here yes but i will say this i have heard watching murder porn when i go to bed or whatever the <laughs> fuck rape victims discussing the incident yeah and it's never sounded like this was portrayed or it's been portrayed in any fucking film where this cliche happens where it's like i don't want to have sex with you stop it i'm fucking disgusted with you oh shit this is all of a sudden so hot i'm into it yeah you know like it happened here it happens in basic instinct it yeah, yeah, yeah. happens in tons of fucking movies. It's such a cliche. And I just don't understand where the fuck it came from. Uh, dude, that I don't know. Because I don't get, like, again, everything I've heard, maybe that's just because it's not rape. It is consens consensual and it's just rough, rough play. And they're just how they're going about it. Fine, fair. But anything I've heard in real life has never resembled that. No, no. 
the next morning, John cooks breakfast for Elizabeth. He prepares her clothes. They then go clothes shopping in some fucking New York City basement. And then we get a montage of them hanging out him giving him showering her with gifts of panties and banging in a clock tower like fucking animals. And Elizabeth then becomes obsessed with finding out who John is, what he does. So she follows him to work one day, brings him lunch, and he makes her feel like shit by literally not saying a word. So she just runs out and he doesn't let her leave. And then takes her to a local bar where they make out and she jerks him off. So we we did we did two lovers, right? Mm-hmm. We reviewed two lovers. Where I'm like, dude, a lot happens in this very short amount of time, but the writing is so good and, yes. and the the dialogue is so good that by the end of that three minutes, you're like, you got like 10 chapters worth of information mm-hmm. without it being overwhelming. Like they did it in this very cool, sly way. This was the complete opposite within this. I don't know. It should have been a five minute like montage of scenes and things. This was like 20 minutes long between the montage. And it's like these movies where it's um, showering you with gifts, but you're giving her panties like, dude, what with the fucking 80s. And like, apparently that was a gift thing. Like, here's here's an overabundance of panties. Like I just this whole series of scenes was fucking ridiculous. Panties and horse whips and <laughs> like yeah, this is he seems to get off more on buying her things than he actually does the sexing. Yes. Which I don't understand because this is like pretty woman, except for she's not a hooker. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I just I don't get a lot of it myself. And then the whole, like, I really want to know what it's like to be the boy scene coming up where she walks yeah, through the yeah. restaurant and the mustache. And, that, like, I, I, get, I don't understand any of that. No, I, I, this is when I start feeling cheated in this movie and almost offended that this made it to the big screen and nothing, <laughs> nothing I've ever written has because, like, there's no real plot happening. It's we talked about in the bodyguard to do another callback. You're welcome. We talked about in the bodyguard where it was basically, you know, Whitney Houston being like, I'm not changing who I am to holy shit. I'm terrified to now nah, I'm not changing who I am to holy shit. I'm terrified. And it's just that repeating. Yeah. This it's just like sex scene. Kind of doing things. Sex scene. Kind of at my job. Sex scene. Doing things montage. Sex scene. I'm yes. kind of at my job again. None of it has any kind of story to it. No. The big story is the art opening and this artist who's like not showing up. <laughs> and that comes out of your B plot. Doesn't yeah. take a hold of anything. Until your third fucking act. Exactly. What? Exactly. Yeah, because because here, this is this is where we get the I want to be a dude, and she dresses up like a dude. And listen, this is the only part of the movie that I'm like, okay, I'm down with this. You want to do some role play? I want to dress up a dude and and feel what it's like to, I don't know, get jerked off inside of a bar like she did in the scene before. Right. I mean, cool, I guess, whatever. You want to do some role play. I'm fucking down with that. But he dresses her up like goddamn Charlie Chaplin. (laughs) And like, she's got the can like, hey, what's going on here? Let's smoke cigars. And then after this, again, just randomly, they get chased through the streets by just random thugs. And after fighting them and Elizabeth stabbing one of them in the ass, they bang in the dirty, rainy alley. So I had the same thought. I was like, ew. Like, that's just New York City sewer water pouring into your parts and all over your person. Yes. But if you remove that and they're just like, oh, this is a movie set and that's very clean water being dumped on you right now in a controlled setting. The sex scene is hot as fuck. 
Absolutely. I'm right there with you, but I but, can't yeah. get my brain out of this is supposed to be a New York City back alley where, I don't know, a bum just shit on those stairs 20 minutes before they got there. And uh, yeah, now you got shit water running down your back. That's never good. Yeah, that's a whole lot of diseases coming your way. Staff, yeah, everybody... at least a UTI is coming your way <laughs> with all the fucking you've been doing anyway. Hell yes. So one day at work, Elizabeth sees her ex Bruce and is trying to hide until Molly tells her that he's there to see her. And Molly and Bruce then take off again. Another random like, hey, look at Molly. She's a piece of shit. And I will say this. Don't get it twisted. Kim Basinger here is doing a low key flex when she just struts up to the balcony and ha happens to be holding this rose and just twists it and looks mm -hmm. down at him for longing. Get the fuck out of here. I know what you're doing, bitch. I know exactly what you're doing. It's dope as fuck, by the way, because the whole time Bruce is about 100%. to be with Molly, he's like, yo, Elizabeth look good. Up on that Absolutely. balcony, holding that rose, looking like a Vita and shit. God damn. <laughs> Elizabeth slowly realizes that her relationship with John is just unhealthy and completely fucked up. And she really gets there when John invites her to a shitty motel room, blindfolds her, and then has sex with a prostitute in front of her. And she freaks out, bounces as John chases her through the streets of New York into a random New York sex club. This, this, went, this, this went to like sexy rounders. Like this, that's, that's where this went. It was like all of a sudden, the minute you turn a corner, they're like in this back alley poker game. There's, it's a sex club though, but. I am still up uh, 20 grand from this last time I stick it in you. She is so disgusted that John would do that and bring a stranger in. That she says, do you want to know how it feels to be out of control? I'll show you. And she goes into a sex club where a group of men are watching two people have sex on the floor in front of them. She then waits until John gets in the room and starts fucking all of these guys. Now, they don't show it. They don't show it at all. What they do is they show her grab one rando, who's probably the second most disgusting guy in there, <laughs> other than the old man with a Band-Aid. And then the next guy steps up and he starts coming in et cetera, et cetera, as they go on. They show her then looking like a fucking disaster at this gallery opening. And she goes into the bathroom and throws up. I am led to believe that she threw herself into a gangbang at this sex club. Right? Uh, I don't think the make, I don't think you stop making out at that situation. And it was, it went, it went not, from no, like, I'm kissing you to like, the next scene was, now this guy's got his hands all over you and they're all starting to circle around you. My guess is you at least had two to three dicks in you at that I, moment in that club. That, I mean, I, I could, you could, I would, I, you can make that inference from fucking step one to step two. Yeah, I don't think she would. Because like, it literally, it, because it cuts. It's a yeah. hard cut from the sex club to the art gallery show yep. where she shows up and she's just a fucking mess. Yes. So again, I'm led to believe that in order to prove to John how disgusted you were with him bringing a hooker in, you did that? Is it possible this story is true? Newsflash, assholes. There's a sequel to this called Another Nine and a Half Weeks, <laughs> where he's fucking Angie Everhart. So clearly he was not affected by your gangbang. <laughs> he went right on to doing the same shit he always did. Yes. You're the only one that got herpes, chlamydia, and felt like shit the rest of the night. Well, and just, just as a, uh, a PSA, because I don't do PSAs, uh, but just as a PSA to everybody out there, if you're like, oh, you made me feel dirty or you made me feel like shit, so now I'm going to go bang all these dudes, chicks, rabbits. Like, it doesn't matter. You always end up feeling like shit at the end because that's not who you are and that's not who she is in this. That's why I say this is a shitty sexual awakening movie because that's not who she is. No. 
and she even says later, like, you know, when when they're breaking up because they go from this gallery scene, which is really weird, where she has this moment of clarity because yeah. she looks with the artist who has dementia. She yes. makes eye contact with him and is like, fuck, I'm doing everything wrong. That was weird. And then she just decides to wake up one morning, starts packing. And she says, you know, this wouldn't have. We were both going to lose interest the second one of us said stop and it got a little too close for me and i'm like dude too cl- a little too close absolutely you were fucking rocking this all night <laughs> and you're fucking telling me too close you stepped over the line in my in my puritan opinion <laughs> you stepped way over the line and yes, i don't we- have a Look, if you want to fucking do gangbangs and anything you want to do, fucking do it. It's Just, not my business. I, I can't, can't caution you enough to say not in that environment and not to prove a point to somebody. Yes. That's just fucking do it because you really want to do it. So after this gallery thing, she calls John, goes to his house. She wakes up. She's still crying. She starts taking her clothes out of John's closet. John wakes up and sees this. He decides that. He's going to start telling Elizabeth a little bit about himself and his background at this point. So Elizabeth here, and and this is what made me laugh. Elizabeth is like, cool story, bro. <laughs> too little, too late. Like, I'm still the, I'm still the fuck out of here. So she walks out the door. John whispers that he loves her and that she better come back by the time he counts to 50. She obviously doesn't. And the movie ends with shots of Elizabeth walking down the streets of New York crying and John being a little sad now that his like plaything went away. And again, you talk about movies and the payoffs at the end. And the payoff wasn't even great here. Like oh. if, 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 if Elizabeth leaves here, she was like, you know what? I thought this was cool at first. And it's like this really weird sexual awakening. Cool. Mm-hmm. But I'm really not down with that anymore. And it got a little too fucking weird because he's getting like dirty fucking hookers in like this shitty goddamn motel room from the movie Seven. Like, I'm, <laughs> no, we're not doing that. Like, that's that's a it's a bridge too far. I'm good. And then like she leaves in this like, I know who I am and this is what I want. And I'm going to be a fucking art person, whatever the hell. And she leaves like that. Like, OK, but. The end of this movie is just like she's in the streets of New York crying like 50 percent of the people in the streets of New York. And then he's like, hmm, she's gone. I guess I'm going to have to hypnotize somebody else now. Hell yes. Uh, there, there's some movies you haven't seen in forever. And you're like, man, I wish I, I need to watch this more frequently. And then there's movies like this, like, oh, there's a reason why I haven't seen this movie in forever. Because this is a one-time view if you've never seen it. And then you just put Mm. it away and never watch it again. You were right. I I totally agree with you on the ending. Um, And and how I would have done it was, I would almost usual suspects it where she leaves crying and she's slumped over and she feels like shit. But with each step, she starts to straighten up a little bit more and she starts to clean herself up. Yeah, and like the last shot is just her kind of smiling, just grinning to herself, walking up straight. She knows who she is. Everything she went through was worth it, paid off. But again, we don't get that. Just everybody's like, no, nah, it's the end of an affair. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Not for me. No, same. Not for me. But uh, yeah, no, I, I think this movie is good. This movie is good to watch because it is so much better than any of the Fifty Shades of Grey bullshit. Yes, that did like that is not interesting to me. Uh, uh, you know, Secretary to another new one where Maggie Gyllenhaal's just getting her ass slapped through the whole fuck. Eh, this is better yeah. than that because yeah. this actually this is sexier. They use the lighting in the camera shots to fucking perfection yep. to make both of these actors look amazing on film. 
Um, I think if you are about to fuck or you want to fuck anybody at 48 to 55, put on this soundtrack and fucking panties are dropping. <laughs> but other than that, yeah, I agree with you. Like, yeah. I would have been fine never watching this again and having a higher opinion of it than I did. I really did. That's such a great point. Yeah. I, like, I had going in when it was on the list, I was like, oh shit, nine and a half weeks. Get ready to watch a bucket. Let's do this. <laughs> Get the tissues and the jerkins ready. <laughs> and then I watched it and went, this is so different than what I remember. <laughs> Yeah. I definitely built that movie up more in my head than like now I'm just like, I, I'll never watch it again just because I'm like, I have a, a just a worse opinion of it now. Yeah. I actually like if somebody's like, oh, nine and a half weeks is sexy. No, it's not. No. I will die. I will die on that fucking hill. Absolutely. Me too. Outside of leave Me your too. hat on. I'm good. <laughs> yes. Leave your hat on. That's a that's that's a that's a dope scene. I'll, I'll give see, you that. It's the only time somebody ever went. God damn, Joe Cocker is sexy as shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, that's that's all I got. You got anything else on this? Yeah. All right. Well, for Corey, I'm Armando. This is Kiss the Reviews, and this was 1986's Nine and a Half Weeks.